welcome to my tutorial on how to set up a static website on AWS with a custom domain using S3, Route 53, CloudFront, and Certificate Manager. So let's start off with the high-level design. We'll be using Route 53 to create our DNS registration, domain name registration. Next, we'll create S3 buckets, and we'll create public S3 buckets to hold our static website, um, whether it be HTML, AngularJS, or ReactJS, etc. Third, we use Certificate Manager to create our SSL certificate. This way, we can secure our website with HTTPS. And finally, we'll use CloudFront. Uh, this will be our content delivery network, our CDN. This will cache our static site for faster delivery. So let's just quickly review our architecture diagram. So first we'll have our DNS entry with our custom domain. That'll be set up in Route 53. From there, requests will go over to CloudFront with the edge servers. The edge servers will hold all the cache content for our site, you know, our index file or our our script files. Uh, there also will link it to our certificate manager so that we can have our site uh, hosted with SSL certificates for HTTPS. And that'll just pull data uh, from our S3 bucket. So now that we have an idea of what we want to do, let's get on with the demo. All right, so the first thing we'll do is go and register our domain. Uh, from here, we will go to Route 53 go to register domains. I already have one created, so I'm not going to create another one. Click on register domain. So here you'll type in a domain name that you are thinking of and check. AWS will tell you if it's uh, available. If not, it'll give you some suggestions. So let's just go ahead and, and pick one. Click on continue. So you get the contact details page next, and here you just fill in your contact information. And you'll have a chance to continue and review before you do your purchase, but uh, essentially once you verify your, uh, your information and commit your purchase, your domain will be registered. So one thing to note is uh, once you verify your purchase, uh, it could take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours for your domain to propagate through. Uh, mine's took about maybe within an hour I was able to access my domain so just keep that in mind so once your domain is registered we can head on back to route 53 and what you'll see is it'll create a set of uh, entries in the hosted zones if you go there you'll see an entry for your domain. And you actually see some entries with uh, routing values. So that's what you should see once the domain is registered and set up. So next we'll move on to create our S3 bucket. We'll click on S3, create bucket we'll give our bucket a name, keeping in mind that this needs to be unique globally. So I'll use let's find solutions as my bucket name. Scroll down. We can uncheck block all public access. This will allow our S3 bucket to be accessible publicly. We'll scroll down some more. We'll leave everything else default for now, and we will say create bucket. So one thing I forgot to do was acknowledge. So now that our bucket is created, let's go ahead and upload a file there. So we'll click here and click upload. We're going to add a file. I already have an index.html created, so I'm just going to upload that file. There's nothing in there but a hello world message. So we're going to upload our file. So now the file is uploaded. Uh, one thing we'll have to do next is go to permissions. Um, even though our bucket is public, we'll still need an, uh, to add a policy to allow um, permission to actually grab that data. So what will happen is we'll go to 
our saved bucket policy. You can look this up uh, on the internet. Um, it's AWS standard bucket policy. This one's just to allow all reads to objects within an S3. We'll go and paste it in the bucket policy here. And one thing we'll have to change is the bucket name. So we'll copy that here and where it says bucket name here, just paste in your bucket name and then save changes. Okay, so that's done now. So the final thing we will do is go to uh, properties, scroll down at the bottom here, you'll see static website hosting. Well, it's, it's actually disabled right now, so we'll want to enable that. So we go here, enable. We're gonna be hosting a static website. We've uploaded our index HTML, so we'll put it here. Point to our index HTML. For now, no error document or redirection rules, and we will save changes. If we scroll down to the bottom now, we will see an endpoint to our site. So let's go ahead and click on it and test it out. And you can see here, it displayed my index.html file with hello world. So the next thing we'll do is go ahead and try to create the SSL certificate for our site. So let's click on certificate manager, request a certificate. We'll leave it a public certificate, click on next. So let's enter in our domain that we created. We'll leave it DNS validation. Let's give it a key and a value. Key of name and again our domain. We'll go ahead and click request. So next we'll have to create a record in Route 53 for this new certificate. So we'll click on our certificate. What we'll be creating is a CNAME record. So click on create record in Route 53. You'll see here it's selected and go to create records. So now if we go to Route 53, And we go to hosted zones. You can see a new entry has been added for our SSL certificate, a CNAME record entry. So now that this is done, if we give a little time and we go back to certificate manager, we should see that the pending request should be complete. So let's go back and see. So we'll go back to certificate manager certificates and you'll see now the status is updated to issue. So that completes our SSL certificate request and we can move on. So next we'll move on to create our CloudFront uh, configuration. So we'll click on CloudFront, create a CloudFront distribution and we're going to give it an origin domain. One thing to note here is if you click on here it's going to point to our S3 bucket but that's not what we want. We actually want the S3 bucket endpoint. So if we go back to our S3 bucket, we want to copy everything after the two slashes. Copy that value. Go back to CloudFront. Paste it. Next, we will scroll down. Uh, not too fast. So under viewer, we want to redirect everything from HTTP to HTTPS. Scroll down a bit more. Uh, we we'll want to add a CNAME value. So click on add item. The CNAME value will be our domain that we registered. will be the CNAME value and then we'll want to pick our SSL certificate that we created. Click on that, we drop it down, we'll see it's in the list there. Everything else can stay default and go to create distribution. 
once that completes, you'll see that our distribution gets created. Um, this endpoint here, you can now access over the internet. Sometimes you have to wait a couple minutes uh, for it to propagate through the CloudFront servers, but you can copy this link, actually paste it, and now this is feeding content from the CloudFront Edge servers. So you'll see here the same hello world from our S3 bucket data is now being fed from the CloudFront endpoint. But we'll still have to do one more thing because that is not actually linked to our domain yet. So let's move on to the final step. So the final thing we have to do is have our DNS point to the CloudFront endpoint. So to do that, we'll have to go back to Route 53. Go to our hosted zones. From here, we're going to create a new record. So we're going to create a record. There's going to be a simple routing record. Click on Next. Define simple record. We'll leave subdomain the same. So under value routing traffic, we're going to pick an endpoint. So let's type in cloud front. And we're going to pick alias to cloud front distribution. Once we do that, we can choose our distribution that we've created. This is the CloudFront Edge Server distribution. And this is going to be an A-type record. We can go ahead and define the simple record. So that's there. And let's say Create Records. So you'll see now we have an A record created. So now that that's done, everything should be hooked up now. So if we go and try to resolve our DNS name, our page should load up. So let's go give it a try. Go here, let's paste it. Let's refresh. And here's our page. Refresh a couple times. So this page now is resolving from our domain name, which is hitting CloudFront and getting a cached version of our index.html. So there you go. Now you know how to host a static website on AWS with a custom domain. If you like my videos, feel free to subscribe or like, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again. Take care now.